Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story with Dorking Wanderers with me, Daniel. It's that time of year again. It's Season 8, Episode 2. It's the first game of the season. Fresh hope, fresh optimism, all inevitably coming crashing down at some point in today's episode. We've got a big double header away at South End, then at home to Bolton Wanderers. So let's see if we can get two positive results, particularly with our relatively new look side. So firstly, if you did miss the last episode where we had our big summer transfer special, please do click in the eye above to catch up with that one. As we mentioned in that episode we had the most players coming in and going out of the club of anyone in the league. We're also obviously moving into our third new ground in three years. Ground sharing with Dagenham and Redbridge this season. So plenty of new things to look forward to. Even our home games aren't really at home. So let's just go and crack on with the first game of the season and see if we can get a positive result. So firstly obviously you saw all the transfers last time out and we did look ahead to our first game of the season. The dynamics were looking good. Everything's pretty positive there. We saw that we were favourites to get into the playoffs. Sixth place was expected, but it was all very tight, so we're not expecting too much at this stage. And our tactics were going to be pretty similar to last year, but we did have the option to go to a defensive midfielder if need be. But for now, Simons will be a central midfielder on defend, and if we need to adapt it later on, we will do. So let's go and get into the first fixture immediately. No need for any hold up whatsoever today. We're in the last year of our contract, we've got to impress, so let's get into it and see if we can do so. We're away to South End, where are they predicted to finish? I guess that's the important question going into today. Southend predicted to finish 20th, Bolton 13th, so these are two games in theory we really should be getting results from. So let's go and see if we're favourites for the game. We are, even though we're away from home, Sean Harries has got the suspension for the home side, and both teams looking like they're playing a 4-3-3, though Southend the narrow one, we really struggle to contain it. But let's take a look at our 11. I think there's only one brand new signing in there, two in fact, sorry, coming into the team today, a few returning low knees, a few more on the bench as well, but only two new faces making their first Dorking appearance. That's Simons in central midfield and then Matt Everett over on the left wing as well. But aside from that it's a fairly familiar lineup, and we look fairly consistent across the board. So our starting 11 is Mitchell in goal as the sweeper keeper on defend. Ramsey and Matt Smith are the fullbacks. Walker and King continuing their partnership at centre half. Both on loan for yet another season from Derby and Leeds respectively. We've got Moles, Simons and Matthew Smith as a midfield three. A few slight tweaks to duties in there. And then Everett and Dalton on the wings with John King up front. Hopefully he'll be able to get more goals this season. We've got Sia on the bench who's a new player. Of course Jack Nolan and Rue as well to centre half. Niall John's there. Four players that haven't made an appearance for us so there could well be more debutants off the bench. But for now we're fairly confident with the squad we've got. We fancy our chances of getting a result. We've just got to see if these lads adapt quickly as most of our transfer business was done later than normal. So when we go to the first game against Southend United, away from home to Roots Hall we go. Let's see if we can get a positive result and keep that optimism at the start of the season. There's one of the negatives of all the late business. Two players who need squad numbers. Let's get that bit of business done. Into the game. I wonder if we're going to be favourites according to our assistant. What sort of team talk he's going to recommend. He's normally quite good at that, Nick Haycock. And the formation is the narrow 4-3-3. Humphreys and Soul up there. Both very good players. A lot of regens in that team. Fossey at right back we looked at in January. Ed Francis I've had in a head coach before. And then also there's lots of young players there. Plenty of regens probably coming from bigger clubs. So we're going to encourage the lads encourage them to do well. There's not much more we can do at this stage really. We're going to keep our usual mentality. There's no need for us to change that. Hopefully that will bear fruit as there won't be much change to the team cohesion and with nine players here from last year's team, I'm hoping they'll be able to respond pretty well. So when we go to the first half can we combat the 4-3-3? Let's get into the first half and find out. We've got our new captain Jonathan Mitchell in goal. He's replaced Gallagher who's obviously a very much a utility player now. He's accepted being dropped from the captaincy. South End have started very well here. So we're going to encourage the lads to play down the flanks and hopefully that will bear fruit too. 28 minutes on the clock. We're yet to see a highlight of note. Southend have had the better chances so far though. Only 30% possession but when you've got three up front that's all you need. Just play over the top to them and see if it works. Here they've got the overlapping left back in Coots. Into Sol who brings it down. Brilliant save Mitchell. Matt Smith hacks it away the left back and we've survived the first clear cut chance of the match but it looks like it's going to be an onslaught for the rest. Southend nil. Dorkin nil. All looking good with five to the break but this has not been a good performance so far and we're struggling to contain Southend's attack in formation. 
Well, despite that, it is nil-nil at half-time. We're going to encourage the lads as we were before. I'm not sure if there's anything more we can do. We could go up to balance, but is that really going to help? I've got the back four defending. I've got Simon supporting them. There's not much more I can do in the middle here. We've just got to try and nick something on the break. There, lads, getting frustrated and nervous, and hopefully we'll be able to take advantage. The front three not performing too well at the moment. Luckily, we have got a lot of changes available. So the first one's going to be Everett on his debut. He'll be replaced by Jack Nolan over on the left wing. Same duty can completely confident with it so let's get back into it with that one made and we'll just stagger them out over 20 minutes or so so Matt Smith the left back's next he's going to be replaced by Luke Thomas that happened quite a lot last year and then with 15 to go the last one will probably be Simons maybe even John King up front struggling so potentially we could bring on Dimitri Sia let's give him his debut for Dorking in we go 15 left it's still nil near here at Roots Hall it's been a woeful game with not many highlights but let's see if we can nick a lucky one on the break well that game was crap <laughs> there was one highlight I believe in the whole match correct me if I'm wrong Southend United with a clear cut chance 10 shots on target in the game not the worst in terms of statistics we didn't get to see any of them though not one highlight in the second half what a woeful game of football we lose it despite having two thirds of the possession we draw it sorry nil nil and I guess defensively at least we're still looking good we're happy with a performance on the road but against the side who are threatened with relegation this year they're one of the favourites to be in contention for the drop and we've really struggled against them there but we do get a point we stay unbeaten beaten and I guess that's all we can ask at this start to the season. It looks like all of the games were pretty close in League One actually. Not many that got off to a flyer in the league. Just Deich with a hat-trick for Lincoln. Is he a good player? Can't finish to save his life. Not sure how he's done that from midfield. On loan from Derby looks a good young player but for us Southend hold out for a draw. A pretty even game in truth. See us Simons, Nolan and Everett all made debuts in the end. Matthew Smith of course the star player. His key passing rate's incredible so we're going to go and thank him for that. He created good chances we just didn't take them and then we've had our offer accepted for Murphy you'll remember that from the end of the last episode so there could well be a new face before the next game we'll be back on Wednesday for that one at home to Bolton I'd say at home of course it's our first game at Dagenham and Redbridge's Victoria Park our third home ground in three years we're ground sharing yet again as Crawley gets upgraded so let's just come back and see if we can get things rolling there Right, well, a quick pit stop between the two games, particularly as that first one was so dull. We've got our leasing.com trophy southern section draw. We don't often get to show you these, so let's go through the draw, see which under-23 side we get. Can we get a monstrous side and maybe two League 2 teams in our group? That would be the ideal. Can we really have a go at this trophy this year? So let's draw out the first teams first. We're obviously one of the first pots as we're a League 1 side. We avoid the likes of Charlton, which is good for us, but let's see who else is there from the southern draw. So MK Dons have come out first. We've avoided them and Woking, who we probably would have liked. Who's going to be third? Oxford United. What league are they in? 11th in League 1. That's not great, is it? We've managed to get a side who have been consistently in League 1. Only the last two years they've not been in the top half or challenging for the playoffs. So that's not quite what we were looking for. We could write this trophy off for another year at this point. Let's look at the third one. Stevenage. Where are they? Did they get relegated last year? They did. They got relegated from League 1. They finished bottom. But a side that we should ideally be beating. Their key player is Kelvin Dugdale. We desperately tried to sign him in the summer. He rejected us for a League 2 team. That's absolutely unforgivable in my books, but not the best start to the draw so far. And then who's the under-23 team? Watford we've got. I'm sure we've had them before. Javier Simons will come up against a few familiar names, but that is not quite the draw we were looking for. So we'll skip ahead to Wednesday now for our first home game of the season. Or is it Tuesday night against Bolton? It's Wednesday because Dagenham are playing on Tuesday, so we'll be back for that one in a moment. Well, some more big news, actually. We've managed to get a few more season ticket sales this year, despite being further away from our home. And we've got a match against Oxford rearranged. I'm not quite sure why that is. Oh, it's because of Crawley v Swansea. So does that mean Crawley are ground sharing as well? Dagenham and Redbridge, Crawley and Dorking, all playing at Dagenham and Redbridge. That suggests that we would have a woeful ground here. Surely the pitch is going to get cut up very quickly. Three games a week, sometimes four or five. That does not bode well as well. I've got to go and check this. Surely they're not playing at the same ground as well. They're not. It says they're playing at the People's Pension Stadium. So let me go back and check ours because it definitely said we were moving to Victoria Park. Maybe the upgrades have been completed and it didn't take as long as I thought. Have I been wrong the whole time? Let me go and check. The People's Pension Stadium. It definitely said that we were moving. That Crawley were getting upgraded to a seven or 8,000 seater. That just hasn't happened here. I've no idea what's gone on there, but it looks like we're back at Crawley after all that. So no move to Dagenham and Redbridge this time. It was definitely in our end of season review. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like we're going back to Crawley and it looks like we're just ground sharing with the same team as normal. In other news we've got our big offer for James Simpson. He will be leaving
in the club now. £210,000 up front, 50% of his next sell on to. And for a backup right back who didn't have much potential now, we can't afford to refuse offers like that. And he'll be moving on to Barnsley, so we wish him the very best of luck in the future. Time for game number two. No fitness test to worry about. Bolton in mid-table as well. Did they draw or lose their first game? They lost away from home. So let's see what their result was. Sorry, it was at home to Lincoln. That game where Dyche got a hat-trick. So Bolton lost 3-2. They've obviously got goals in them. That's something we've got to worry about. But at home today, we'll be hoping we can get a result. Let's see as we're slight favourites again. Can we put in a slightly better attacking performance? So we're going to go for the same 11, I think. There was nothing wrong with it defensively. Maybe just Everett for Nolan. Nolan looked slightly better when he came one of the two but aside from that the same 11 and 18 just Nolan switching with Everett so let's get into the second game of the day and see if we can fare a bit better against Bolton 4-2-3-1. Some familiar names for Bolton Wanderers. The likes of Darcy and Brown, both players I recognise from real life. Aside from that, a lot of regens and players I don't know. So it's a bit of an interesting mix they've got there. Some youngsters coming in, some players that will be in their mid-20s and more experienced now. And that formation is one we've struggled with yet again, though not so much as the one we had against Southend. It's a 4-3-3 for us. We all know the tactic we play by now. So we're going to encourage the lads yet again, just as Nick Haycock recommends. And in we go to the first half against Bolton Wanderers. Can we do it our home under the lights. Well, to be fair, we just got a glimpse as we were going into the game. The ground is very sparsely populated here. Obviously, back at Crawley, by the looks of things, it lots to look like the same ground, to be fair. But behind the goal, there's almost no one here. And Bolton are on the attack early on. We haven't had a shot at all yet. Nearly 20 minutes on the clock. Bolton coming forward for their third chance of the game. Here's McLaughlin over to Davison. I thought we were going to nick it in midfield there, but it doesn't look the case. Quinn gets it wide. Brooks on the overlap. Too easy to get it in. Good header away, Ramsey. But it's back in again. Volleyed from the edge just wide at the post. We didn't look very comfortable defending there, but we do survive and we're 20 gone, it's still nil-nil. Here we go on the right-hand side, Ramsey with a throw-in. He finds John King, who's a little bit deep for my liking. Back into the centre-half and we're working it forward now. Here's Simons in the holding midfield role. Out to the left centre-half, Walker. Man inside is Matthew Smith. Can he create another key pass? Nice simple ball out to Nolan in the end. Can the new tricky winger do something? Here he goes, just cuts it back to Smith. Nice and safe option for now. We just need someone to take a risk. Really try and get in behind and create something. Matthew Smith Smith's that man out to Dalton. His knockdown's not very good. And it's a long ball forward by Bolton Wanderers. But it falls straight for Walker at centre half. Here's Ramsey back to him again. Plenty of men over. Can we create something here? Just doesn't look like it's going to happen for us at the moment. Smith finds Moles in the middle. He's in the centre circle. But we just look like we can't go anywhere. And we're missing a little bit of that attacking impetus actually. But that's a good ball from Smith as always. Nolan on the left wing to the byline. Delivers to Dalton. He's there. Hits the post and is cleared. Dalton looked on for his first of the season there. But unfortunately it just wasn't to be. Here's Simons into the middle. Matthew Smith just gets there first. He finds Moles. We're still on the attack. It's relentless pressure now. Over to the left for Nolan again. Two in the middle if he can find them. His cross is deflected. It's behind for a goal kick. Must have come back off him again there. But 25 gone. A good chance going forward. Nice to see us creating something moving forward to be honest. With half an hour gone it remains goalless. And now it's Bolton coming forward with a corner kick. Here's Davison with the in swinger. Into the front post. Headed in by Bolton. We have been woeful in this game. I'm going to go up to positive because we're not really creating anything. I want to try and get on the front foot. We're going to demand more and try and create something going forward because we have been absolutely useless so far. 10 to the break. Not a good start to the season. We expected it to be slow, but not this bad. We've got nine players in the team who were here last year and have not looked like they've ever met each other before. Here's Bolton in the middle again with Davidson. Long ball down the left to Darcy. He's got plenty of time on the ball there. Goes back to Davidson. Page again. They're all over us in possession. He's nearly 50-50. They've had more shots. We're yet to have a shot on target at all. I know we've hit the post, but we've been done there as well. Into the back post to Okoye. He heads over the bar, but the two fullbacks skinned. And that is a very worrying sign going into half time. We'll tell the lads we're disappointed. Ask them to show something else. Hopefully they'll respond in the second period. But it doesn't look like it's coming anytime soon. We've really struggled to get going at all this season so far. We said the optimism and the fresh hope would go quickly. We didn't quite think it would be this quick, to be honest. But with an hour on the clock, it's still 1 0 Bolton. We're going to have to go attack because they're still creating nothing. We're going to ask the lads to show some passion. As Bolton put one in the box, King heads away as far as Nolan. And falls down on the edge of the box for Bolton though. Brown shots blocks, Simon tacks away. And John King's got to start to counter here. There's five going forward. He's been hacked out of the game. But it falls for Dalton. He's got two up with him. Has to pass there. He shoots and goes alone. There's three with an open goal in the middle. And his greedy play. He's coming off for that. He's got the poorest fitness in the team. It's an awful, awful decision there. And it really should have been 1-1 here at Dalton. 
talking, but instead we managed to keep our deficit. So Dalton's coming off, he'll be replaced by Tom Cook, same for Nolan and Everett on the other side, and then Stefan Moles has been the worst of the midfield three, I'm going to bring on McKinnon in his normal role, he'll be a deep line playmaker, I might change Simons back to a ball winning midfielder on support, try and get him a little bit higher up the pitch, and hopefully we'll respond as that's similar to last year, and with 20 to go we can hopefully get back in it. Free kick to Bolton again. I mean, they're all over us. Into Gordon, headed just over. Is there anything we can do tactically? I'm going to go a little bit more direct. Try and get the ball forward a little bit quicker. We're going to push our line up. I know it risks us at the back, but we've got to try and create something here. So we're going to ask the lads to get forward a bit more. And hopefully they'll respond with an improved performance. Five minutes to go. We've gone very attacking. I mean, nine of the same team as last year. And they look like they've never met each other. Even two of the subs today were regulars last season. I just can't quite work it out. But 90th minute, we've got a free kick on our way. King to McKinnon. Can we nick a result from somewhere? King's going up for the header. Headed away as far as Matthew Smith. He finds Everett in one-on-one. -on -one. It's a brilliant save. Didn't do enough with a chance, though. He's one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to score chances like that. And it's behind for a corner kick. Headed away at the front post. Falls for Matthew Smith. Can he get it inside? He does. Falls for Simons. Here's Walker making his way back from the corner. Matthew Smith in the middle. We just need to create that one bit of magic. We're just a minute left into stoppage time. Three minutes minutes of it remaining. Cook crosses. Is that a penalty? It looked like he'd gone down under the challenge. Maybe a trip, but nothing given. And with two to go, that was our chance. Four minutes of stoppage time. We lose 1-0. Bolton Wanderers take the win here against Dorking. We're disappointed. It was a poor performance, albeit Bolton up in the playoffs last season. But we've really got to be winning those sorts of games, or at least taking something from them and looking a bit of a threat. As it is, we were outplayed. We deserve to lose the game. And that matches the performance at South End, to be honest. We were lucky to get a result there. Stefan Davidson was definitely the star. He looks a good player, but again, nothing particularly special. These are the sort of teams we should be competing with here, and I'm starting to doubt that media expectation. Are we really going to be able to compete for the playoffs? We've been here seven years, but this is going to be a tough test after a pretty disastrous start to the season. We will look at when we'll next be back. I like the look of those three games in the middle of September. Portsmouth, Barnsley and Ipswich, three massive games at this level, so I think we're going to come back for two of those. They've both started brilliantly. You can see Portsmouth are in second, Barnsley up in a top 6-2. Where are Ipswich at the moment? They're first, so this is going to be a difficult test. We need to get some results between now and then. We've got a lot of difficult ties. We've obviously got the Millwall Cup game as well. They're a side in the championship doing well. So there's plenty of tough challenges ahead for us, and we're going to need a couple more reinforcements in the window. We've got one or two more coming in, hopefully. James Simpson obviously left the club, so it frees up a little bit of budget, and a bit of the wage bill as well, although Simpson was pretty much on peanuts. But if you did enjoy this episode and that terrific start to the season, please do put a thumbs up on here. It's good to see us struggling again, isn't it? We look decent at the back, but in front of goal, we're woeful. We can't score a goal. Dalton and King's form's dried up. On the left wing, the two new signings look just as bad as the last one. I think in this whole series, bar Tom Richards, we've not had a good left winger. I know we struggled with Yandolo. He then went off and scored goals galore elsewhere. It's just been a bit of a weird position for us. But we'll keep on going. Hopefully, we'll get somewhere. I'm sure we'll be able to persevere with it. Don't forget the media expectation this year is playoffs, but the board only want us to finish in the top half and that's a little bit more reasonable for us i'm sure we can sneak our way into the top 12 let me know in the comments where else you think we should improve the squad is there anywhere you think we need to improve the first team i'm looking for one more central midfielder who can maybe unlock a door maybe even someone else in the defensive areas too but again defensively we've looked pretty solid this season it's just a goalkeeper we've been chasing for some time jonathan mitchell stepping up a skipper though so we've got to praise him for that but midfield and forward we look absolutely useless and that's something we'll be working on on the training ground if you haven't already, subscribe for daily FM20 content from both of my long-term stories. We're pretty similar parts of the season in both saves, actually. So a couple of years earlier in our head coach series, no saying transfers or contracts in that one. But of course, we've just started a season there too. Plenty of hope and optimism. Can we make it count? Or will we suffer as much as we are in this one? This one will be back in two days' times with those big games against top-of-the-table sides. And hopefully we'll be competing nearer them by that point. Although it could all go wrong and we could be fighting relegation again. We need to get those new lads set in it seems to be making a big difference despite only being a couple in the first team squad so fingers crossed that will change pretty quickly but otherwise it's going to be pretty much hit and hope at this point we need to get scoring sooner rather than later finally i'm part of a podcast that does match day vlogs and interviews and if you haven't already please do catch up with our match day vlogs you can see the link to the series in the eye above we also have some serious discussions and interviews and you can see those all on the channel as well we really do appreciate your support with recent episodes we really can't thank you enough for your feedback
feedback. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support of the series as always. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time for another big episode as we try and get back on track with Dorkin Wanderers.